Hey guys, this is Neo here. First thing, this isn't a review, right? The Z790 Tekken X isn't new, and for the most part, you're going to struggle getting your hands on this one. When you do, it's likely going to cost you over 700 US dollars, so it's not a review. And if it's not a review, then what is it? Well, I was so, so fortunate to get my hands on this motherboard, and it also happens to be around the time when I'm considering looking back at the progress just made regarding DDR5 and Intel's LGA 1700 socket. So that goes from Z690, uh, 13th gen, 12th gen, 14th gen, all three, essentially. Either way, I'm not here to talk about all that other stuff and how awesome the DDR5 overclocking is on this one yet. I'll leave that for a time when I have a CPU that won't limit what the board or memory is capable of. Until then, I'm just excited about actually getting my hands on one of the rarest XOC boards and wanting to share that excitement with you guys. The Tekken range, which was previously known as the SOC range, needs no explanation. These are high performance extreme overclocking boards built solely around the idea of maximizing performance within the context of competitive overclocking, usually stripped of many things which do not benefit the pursuit of overclocking in any obvious way. So then, why, if it's been stripped of all these things, does it cost so much? And not just this one, other ones as well. Well, it's not that things have been removed per se, but much has been added as well. I mean, a lot of the cost here is actually hidden too. In R&D, a lot of it is in R&D and other elements that you just can't see with the naked eye. It's not just the features, buttons, switches on the board. Yes, they and the power stages components, high quality audio filters contribute immensely to the price, but so does the basic PCB itself. Unlike other Oros boards of the X series, this is a 10 layer PCB, which is shared with no other SKU. As such, a large part of the price here is simply down to the high cost of production. In fact, I'd not be surprised if this board cost as much, if not more than the limited edition Oros Extreme X Ice, which is an eight layer PCB board, whose high price is directly related to the value, like Thunderbolt, Torx screwdriver set, additional extras in the package, the visuals in general, and all that good stuff. This is not the case with the Tekken X. It's a niche product for a niche market, and according to Gigabyte's numbers, doesn't justify mass production or availability in all their respective markets across the globe. Should you eventually retire this board to your main machine, just look at the rear I.O. for instance. It's a lot more functional than you'd expect from an XOC board. You have the Q Flash Plus button, of course, but you also get a protection mode button. You get four USB 5 gigabits per second ports, three 10 gigabit per second ports, and one 20 gigabits per second port, which is USB Type-C, of course. Unfortunately, this one isn't PD 3.0 compliant, nor is the one on the front I.O. You have HDMI output for IGP, which is much appreciated in emergency situations. And finally, you get a full complement of audio stereo mini jack outputs. Audio again is not overly engineered, but surprisingly competent in the familiar combination of an ALC 1220 codec and high quality audio capacitors, all of which is shielded and enhanced by the DTS Ultra compliant license you receive. The rest of the board outside of the XOC area is what you'd find on a modern Wi-Fi 7 board or perhaps even a master SKU in some instances. You have four PCIe Gen 4 M.2 sockets. Not sure what happened to the Gen 5 lanes directly from the CPU for this, but either way, I think many of us can live with Gen 4 drives, and if need be, you can use a Ryzer card. But note that if you do use a Ryzer card, it will be Gen 5 X8, much like your GPU, because the third slot is actually from the chipset, so it's Gen 3 X4. Fan headers used to be a thing for me for many, many years when it came to gigabyte boards, but it hasn't been the case in a very long time. The Tekken X is a healthy example of this because it has seven PWM fan headers all over the board, more than enough for my needs or anything that I would think is fan related. And true to its OC nature and super convenient for you as well, is an onboard USB type A port. Many times you just want to flash a BIOS, get a tool from your USB drive, save a score or what have you, change a desktop and going to the back of the board is just not feasible, it's frozen or just inconvenient to get to. This front 10 gigabits per second port is actually quite handy. All right then, with that covered, let's just talk about the BIOS briefly. So the first tab is your favorites, of course, which you can customize in both legacy or the advanced mode. Useful as always and well worth taking the time to set up properly, I think. The XOC BIOS or the OC BIOS versions allow you to select the microcode version as well. Some overclockers have found that particular microcode versions overclock best for their DRAM. 
of interest to me and what I've not had a chance to explore any further is the one core voltage prediction sub menu. Here you can measure DDR5 memory bandwidth and latency for your current settings or your current DRAM settings rather, much like you would in IDA64. Here you can also see the actual voltages of the voltage frequency curve of your CPU and the individual voltages of the cores, including your favorite core. What I've yet to figure out is the difference between the point ratio and the run ratio. Additionally, I also don't know how the test 1p core ratio works. By the time I do my second performance video on this motherboard or actual review, I should be familiar with these options. XOC BIOS in particular has a quick memory setting and true to the nature of this board, the DRAM speeds start at DDR5-8400. All of this, of course, is dependent on your CPU's IMC to achieve a CPU which I do not possess right now. The Tekken X, like most competent boards, allow you to select a DRAM gear mode. Note that not all CPUs can handle gear 4 for some reason, others getting worse at this ratio like the one I was using. Memory boot mode, as I've said on other older Gigabyte board reviews, is necessary to disable fast boot. Otherwise, some DRAM's timings will not change, especially when you are using the built-in DRAM profiles. In the extreme memory overclocking settings, you'll also find channel control settings, CPU cold, memory dive, and DDR bus response settings. The CPU cold setting is self-explanatory, I'd imagine. CPU dive has various settings that work best for gear 4 or gear 2. The sub menu here has a fuzzy span, rumble, flare, and whirl setting. From what I've read, flare for instance is best for gear 2, fuzzy is best for gear 4, and I think rumble is for CPUs that need like a um, high VDD2 voltage. And the last setting, which is DDR bus response, is a set of 15 values. Which one works best for stability is something that is different for each CPU apparently, so you'll have to play around with this one it seems. For the more regular user, the latest BIOS at the time I made this video was F4D, which was the high resolution interface BIOS. You know, the one that's black, gray, or silver with hints of orange here and there. I generally like this interface, to be honest, and of course, I prefer it over the legacy one. The differences here are not superficial, believe it or not, as the retail BIOS has some other options the XOC one does not have, and the opposite is true as well. One advantage of the resale BIOS is that it has the exhaustive DDR5 memory profiles under the DDR5 XMP booster submenu. Micron, Samsung, and Hynix ICs are all covered here. Maybe within the exception of the newer and certainly rarer Micron ICs that do like DDR5 7000 plus. Talking about memory, when fiddling with the limits, you all know that you're going to experience crashes. It's just the nature of this thing. Well, for such situations, I actually loaded a profile that I knew my CPU couldn't handle. And of course it failed after several tries. But what happened then is that the system went into the second virus when it detected the post failure. This can actually be very annoying, particularly if you're doing LN2 or DICE overclocking. And it's for this very reason that you get the single dual main and backup bar switches, which allow you to lock this board and prevent it from doing such a thing. Despite all these settings, however, there's little or nothing a motherboard can do about a CPU whose IMC is simply not up to scratch. And this is something that I don't think is basically communicated as well as could be, but it is true that your DRAM frequency is a lot to do with your CPU more so than your motherboard a lot of the times, particularly if you have a two DIM board. And the CPU is one such sample because despite its best efforts, yes, DDR5-8000 can get into Windows and pass a few basic benchmarks, but it'll crash Y-Cruncher 2.5B easily. Obviously, this is not the case when you run something like DDR5-7600 CL34, which is what I did. That said, I'm hoping to get my hands on a DDR5, let's say 8800 capable CPU at some point, which would allow me to see the limits of this motherboard more than what I'm able to right now. But we'll deal with that at a later time. But anyway, I've gone over almost every single detail of this motherboard that I care about at this point. It's not an exhaustive list of features that I've gone over, but I think I've shared with you my general insights on it in the week and a half that I've had with it. I can't wait to use another CPU and try different sets of memory on the board, like the um, ADI based Vcala Manta Xfinity DRAM, which should produce some stellar results on this motherboard. Anyway, with that said, those are my initial impressions of the Z790 Tekken X. I'll get more familiar with it as time goes on, learn how to extract the most from it and understand it better, of course. I hope to be able to bring you that journey and that story of mine at that appropriate time. 
Let me know what you appreciate about this one, Exos Sports in general, and if you are lucky enough to have access to this one or own one in the comments below. Until the next time, please take care of yourselves, guys, and peace.